So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I've got these already made, but I will show you how to do them and what they are. You can see all the shiny goodness in them. So the piece is actually a lot more shinier than it actually looks. What you do is you take these primary elements, which are available in the Indigo Blue shop, and they come in different size tubs and they come in sets. And it's basically a powder, looks like that. So you take a scoop of the powder, put it into a bottle. These are just uh, cosmetic bottles that I got from the local uh, Superdrug Boots type place. And fill it up with water. Uh, you don't want to use cold water. I use just normal room temperature water. And every time you use them, make sure you give them a good shake because all of the mica stays in the bottom. And all you do basically is test them on scrap paper and let them dry and see if you like the colour. If you don't think it's dark enough, add some more powder. If it's too dark, then take some water out, put it into another bottle and add some more water to thin it down a bit. Really easy to use, really lovely. And there's one thing I need to tell you about them, and I'll do you an example. Because these are artists quality pigments, you are actually paying for the colour. So if you get a set and you've got one which looks like it's that full, and then maybe you get another and it's only that full. That is exactly how it's supposed to be. You've not got a faulty one that's half empty. What happens there is, because you're paying for the pigment, this green is more expensive than this pink. So you're getting the same amount of money's worth but because the pigment's more expensive, you get less in this one than you do in this one. And they go really, really far, so you don't really need to worry about it too much. But there's definitely nothing wrong with them if one's got more in than the other. Okay. So I'm starting off with a piece of card, and that's bright white, so it's gone blurry. Sorry about that. There we go. So I'm starting off with a piece of card and it has to be card that will take water. The really really nice indigo blue card unfortunately it doesn't take water very well so you can't use it for this technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got three colours that I've picked that go well together. You don't have to use the same colours as me just get what you like. Um, sorry, did I say three colours? I meant four. So I've got Hopeful Honeysuckle, Mango Freeze, French Lilac and Autumn Skies. These ones are lovely. So to get the effect, I'm going to do one at once and I'm going to use a heat gun. So I will start with the French Lilac and I'm just going to give it a big square there. And then I want it to run. So I don't want it to drip off because I want to keep the colour. But I do want it to run. So then I'm going to heat it. So heat gun warning. But this is a really quiet heat gun so you shouldn't be bothered. And I'll probably fast forward through the actual drying parts because you don't want to sit there and watch me drying. So you can see how shimmery these really are. They are so good. So I've left that little bit a bit damp. I'm not too worried about that. So I finished with the French lilac. I'm going to go on to the hopeful honeysuckle. And you can see there it's a completely different colour. Then when I shake it, 
and give it a shake and it goes more pink beautiful these are absolutely beautiful so I'm going to offset a bit and squirt in a different area I always do about three and I'm going to do the same again I'm going to get it to drip but I don't want it to drip so all of the actual ink goes off the bottom because I do want the colour still on so again I'm going to dry Okay, the next one I'm going to use is the Autumn Sky. And look at that. You can see all of that mica flooding about in it. So cool. I love watching these things. I like to just watch them sell. Anyway, next colour. If you've not got enough uh, ink to make it run, then you can always spray on a bit more. But I find three pumps is enough. And you can direct it with your finger there. And if your colour is not deep enough, then just go over it again once it's dry. The reason that I'm letting it, I'm drying it in between each one is if I sprayed all three, the way that you make brown is a mixture of all the colours. So all I'd make is brown. To make sure that all of the colours stay the actual colour I've sprayed them on, I, I do it this way. Okay, the last one that I'm going to use is the Mango Freeze, which kind of looked orange before I've shaken it, but it is actually yellow. So a more yellowy orange than an orange. And it's the lightest one. So I'm going to put that over the top right there and I want this one's drip to go down there so what I'm going to do is you could take a pin or anything, this is just a bamboo skewer and you can direct and lead where you want it to go. So don't think that it's completely random, you can direct where you want it to go. And I could make that go off in two directions if I wanted to because it's quite big. Okay. So I think uh, there's not enough of the blue and not enough of the pink so I'm going to do another little bit of blue and you must shake them every time because the mica will settle quite quickly at the bottom especially if they've been left for a minute or two. So I'm going to do another bit of blue here, just do one. Squirt like that, like that. And I also want some more pink, so I'm going to give that a whiz, there we go, and I'm going to put a bit more pink right there, and I want that to dry out that way, and a bit up there as well, because that looks cool. And they're not quite dry, but that's fine at this point, I'm going to add a little bit more purple right there, a tiny bit of yellow, right there. So you are it looking like this and it is really quite interesting at this point. See all the shine. So my uh, card that I did was based on uh, the wild honey distress. So I'll do exactly the same as what I did for that. I'm just going to straighten it out a bit. And then I'm going to take my wild honey. And I'm going to edge it. I'm 
I'm going quite far in, as you can see. That will become apparent. And I will go lighter as it's further in and make sure it's really dark outer edge, like that. Quite a quick process really and you're going for the grungy look anyway so it doesn't matter if it's perfectly blended the next step will help that bit out so if you're not so good at using the foam and the inks it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you get lines they'll come out in the next step so you do need to keep your uh, mat that you're working on clean throughout the whole stages of this because you do want to keep the background of your card being white. Okay. So clean and dry. So I've got a, um, a garden sprayer and this one puts out quite a big spray and a big splatter. Make sure this is well out of the way. So I'm going to squeeze it when it's got some water in it. <laughs> I'm going to squeeze it as I know how makes it put big blobbies because that's what I want. And you can see the big blobbies already starting to appear. So then I'm going to give that a few seconds, just probably about that long, and then I'm going to take it off. So I get all that water off there, and yes I do need to try it again for the next step. So you can see it's given a lovely effect and it lightened it up and where there's lines and things where you've done not been very well at your blending it, they've all pretty much gone so i will give this another quick dry and i'm going to dry it from both sides i'm going to dry it from this side and i'm going to dry it from this side and that's to make sure that it is still really dry all the way through because the next step is using the flitter glue Okay, so there we have it. There we get that shine. See, the shine is still all there. Right, the next stage is I'm going to... I've got my tile out, and I've got my flitter glue, and I've got my sponge. So I want to... Put a nice big blob of glitter glue onto my sponge and then I need to wipe the top and make sure you wipe the top if you've got one of these type of tubes with dry tissue if you use wet tissue and water or baby wipe or anything goes down inside the tub then that's your whole tub will be wasted because the flitter is water based and it, it dissolves in water. It's water cleanup, not water based. Yeah, it is water based as well, but it's water cleanup. Okay. So I'm going to take my spatula. If you get the starter kit of this, you'll have got a spatula in it. If you don't have a spatula but you have everything else, it's a, a Tesco's Club card, Sainsbury's Nectar card, whatever. I wouldn't say a credit card because you know you need that to buy the stuff with <laughs> and to go shopping with and you don't exactly want to get your uh, card stuck in a machine somewhere do you because it will stay sticky for a long time so I'm putting that face down onto a tile and that's so it keeps the air from getting directly to the glue and dissolving it and it'll make it last longer this will be ready to use for about two hours. I might have to re-glue it up in case if I get any more um, 
if I if I run out, but it will be usable for quite a while. So the stamp I'm going to use next, and which I used on the card, is the Sheet Music. This is a really new stamp. It's a really big stamp. And once you get it, I'll give you a tip. Work out which is the top, which is this, with the writing down, as you can see on here. And then I put an arrow with a Sharpie marker and then make sure it dries thoroughly, which I didn't, so it smudged a bit. And basically I always know all the time that is the top. I'm not going to use this with a block because I want it to be rather random. So what I'm going to do is randomly ink up with my sponge. And then I'm just going to randomly stamp. I don't want to do more than three really, so I do want to be careful where I'm doing it. Any more than that looks a bit too much. And I'm just rolling it across. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Um, no, you won't. So I'm not bothered about the glue. The glue will stay, um, the, the glue here will stay wet for quite a while. Um, not wet, it'll stay tacky for about a week. So what I'm more bothered about is getting my glue off my stamp. And usually what we say is have a little tub of water with you when you're doing this and dump your whole stamp into the water. But unfortunately I don't have room on my desk at, right at this moment for a tub of water. So I'm just getting the most of the glue off my stamp and I'll get the rest of it off later once I've finished doing this video for you. I'm only doing this because, as I said, I've got no room. Outside of this square is, is pretty much, yeah, I'm not going to show you, so please don't ask for photos because I know some of you will. My crafty area looks like a bomb sitter at the moment. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to edge my whole piece. And I don't want a perfectly equal edge because this is a distressed piece. So to edge your card, you take your sponge and depending on how far you press, yeah, you can see, it depends how thick of an edge you get. So I want it completely random and broken and I'm not bothered that orange distress ink is transferring to here because I can wash this out under the sink and it will be reusable and the orange distress will disappear and it won't affect my stamping really because when you put flake over it it will get covered but it won't affect the actual quality of the glue. I can see where the glue is going, but you can't on camera, so there's no point me trying to show you. Um. Okay, so I'm going to put this out of the way. I'm using the Chariot of Fire Flake. And um, when you've got your flake in these tubs, just be careful when you lift the lid off because if you go too quick, the whole lot will go whoosh out and you'll lose it. And I always go by the rule that if I'm not using my flake and I've not got my hands in it, then I've got the lid on it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do next is find my glue spots by picking the flake up and just rubbing it on. There they are. Okay. And all the excess I'm putting back into the tub. 
and I want to make sure that I've got loads of flake around the edge so I'm picking up handfuls of it and squeezing it. I'm making rather a mess. I'm not usually this messy. But all this excess here, I'm going to give it a rub. And put it all back in the tub. So in actual fact I've used relatively little flake. I think this one's turning out nicer than the original one. If you've made an absolute mess like I just have then just use your scoochie foam and put it all off your fingers back in the tub. And then I'm going to scrape all this back into the tub. Okay, so I've finished with the flake. So, like I said before, put your lid on it if you're done with it. Okay. So the next step, and this is where the most common question that I get is where people will go wrong. They'll say that they're um, scooching their piece and they're pulling all the flake off it. Well, there's a couple of reasons. The main reason is because after you put your flake on and push the rest back into the tub, you need to put it flat and actually burnish it down with your fingers. This makes sure that the flake has actually adhered itself to the glue. That's that's the most common reason. The other one is that you've actually um, not put enough glue on so the glue has dried on your stamp before you've actually stamped it. So none of it none of the glue is transferred onto the paper. Okay. Uh, I don't like this bit here and I don't like this bit here so I'm gonna fix because this, this is just too much. It's not as delicate as I wanted it grungy but not that grungy so I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. So the next step is to take your scoochie foam and refine all the detail. So I'm just doing this side and I'll show you the difference between the two. Now if you look how perfect that is and you see that's still quite clumpy this is what the scoochie foam does it refines it and makes the detail magically appear you do need to go in different directions and if you've got lines on your stamp follow the lines so I mean by lines this one, the lines go this way, so I'm going to make sure that I go this way to make sure it gets all of the excess out of them lines. Okay. So, there we have it. And you can see it's all perfect, as it should be. So to fix this up here and this bit down here that I don't like I'm going to take one of our um, battery operated erasers we call them a whizzy eraser and they don't look like this anymore because we've got a different supply they are the same thing though and they're the same price it's just uh, black instead of being different colors so I'm going to take the eraser and rub out this big clump that I don't like like that and you can't even tell that there was any flake there in the first place and I'll do the same on the bottom corner I'll show you before there it is before and there it is after I've got that big clump away 
Now see here that it's uh, joined up in the middle and I don't like that either. I did want it to be separate um, but in my finished card I actually had a piece over the top of the middle so it wouldn't matter but just in case you did this as your background and you didn't have a piece to cover it again I use the wizzy eraser and just take that excess off that I don't like and split it up And there, so I've split that up so it does look like it's two different parts. So the next step would be to put your card together and finish it. I think this particular effect looks great on craft. And I'll put the finished card up picture at the end because it is already in Kay's hands. So what you do is layer on your craft onto a card backing and then layer on your finished piece. Hope this, been, this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.